Hello, welcome to Room 442 for our Friday Roundtable. And unlike most shows, we actually have a roundtable. Like right here, it's <laughs> legit, legit. Albert, Mikey, James here. Um, Toronto FC, Let, let's start with them. It's been one of those weeks, maybe two weeks, that, that will go down, I think, in, in history. There's often noise around this team. There's been some big weeks in, in previous seasons, of course. But with all the, the conjecture, the transfer rumours, the, the transfers, the signings, Mikey, I mean, you covered this team for, for some time. How does this, this past 10 days or so, so rate for you? It's, in, it's incredible. This is the type of stuff that I, that I love, James. I love the, the movement, the transfers, the armchair GM <laughs> of being covering this league, right? And the last two seasons before this one, what TFC preached was consistency. I think maybe in my time you had seven, eight players that were signed to the club since about 2019, 2020. This year has just been chaotic. And I relate this closely to the Lorenzo Insigne saga that kind of transpired this offseason. And then, of course, the moves that followed that surprised a few people, you know, with Kamar Lawrence, Aro, stuff like that, Richie Larea going overseas. And then, of course, a week like this in, in the middle of summer. That's, I, I love it. it it's, it's why previewing MLS teams before a season makes no sense. <laughs> because, because teams rebuild as the season goes on, it's essentially in the summer in particular. Uh, but this team will look so different, I would think, within a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. three weeks, than when they first kicked off. All the kids playing, some nice stories there, the struggles. But then there's going to be this this veteran laden team. I think if you believe this guy, yeah, a veteran laden team, um, which looks pretty damn good on paper. Well, yeah, with some very good attacking options. I mean, if you have Federico Bernardeschi now coming in, Federico, Federico, Federico. Fernando. not Fernando. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the Fernando yesterday at the training ground. I did a trap. This guy's been eating me up ever since. <laughs> Federico, not his brother Fernando, is coming in. But up front, you have Insigne, Jesus Jimenez, and Bernardeschi. If he comes in, which it sounds like he is. Uh, and I know we've had conversation before, and you think that, you know, with him coming in and with the squad the way it is right now, they should be MLS contenders for the Cup, right? Yeah, I think maybe one or two more additions on top of Bernadeschi, but I think they are going to make those additions. So you add those on top of that attacking three. I was, I was wondering what Miami's kind of front line is going to mm -hmm. look like with the addition of pause, and I'm thinking, man, that's going to be dangerous. But then I look at TFCs, and I'm like... It kind of makes sense, like why TFC are making a move like this, getting Insigne, Bernadeschi, and Jesus Jimenez up top. You slot in Osorio, Bradley, maybe another central midfielder in with them. All of a sudden, you're, you're starting to look like a pretty good, you know, six and up. And then the back line, which obviously has question marks, let's see if Salcedo stays. Then you have Crescito, Mavinga. Maybe a Luca Petrasso in there, or Jaquil Marcheretti. That's that's not a bad squad. The it's defense not. is concerning, though, right? Like twenty six straight games conceding a goal like that. You're not going to win a champion in the MLS, MLS, right? In the MLS, but you're not going to win a championship with that type of defense, right? So hopefully, I mean, if Salcedo stays, it'd be great because he's obviously a very good defender, and you put him alongside Crescito, another very good veteran defender, but. They certainly need to, with all the attacking players coming in, it's great, but defensively, if you can't shut it down, you're not going to win. Yeah, let me say something on that. Salcedo is probably the highest paid defender in Major League Soccer right now. He's quality, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, hasn't had a good season. Very inconsistent. But I think the qualities are there where you can see he could be a good center back. But he's been paired up with a lot of different pieces, a lot of young players not covering, you know, he has to cover for pretty young fullbacks there on the wing so far this right. season. Enter Crescito, who I believe will be the best center back on this team, best defender on this team, whether mm -hmm. he plays center back or left back. I think he's even better than Salcedo. So you add a piece like that to your team, what does Salcedo look like now? Right. He was the captain of Genoa and Zenit. He has the potential to really push this back line and lead this back line. And I think you're, you're going to start to see glimpses of that where he's we're going to become the leader of the back line on this team. It's a good point. And obviously we talk about the big name value of these guys coming in and what they can do in the field, but how they can lift the players around them is that intangible. I think mm -hmm. that can really make a difference to this team as well. But back to Salcedo, if he stays, everything you say there makes complete sense if he stays, but there are rumors about him, him moving back to Mexico at some point. 
if he goes to Mexico or wherever it goes, if that happens, there's one more DP spot available for this team, which is fascinating. <laughs> Where is the need now? Okay, defensively, as you mentioned now, but there's, there's concerns there. But DP on defense, you know, I know South Sailor's one doesn't happen too often, at least not too much success. You mentioned that that one spot perhaps in the midfield. Is that somewhere that you'd target for a DP? That That is where I'd probably target if I am Bob Bradley and, and Bill Manning there. Just because if you, the other position would be striker because DP strikers are just money in Major League Soccer. But you already have Jesus Jimenez. You already have The happiest Iowa. man in the world right now, by the way. Oh, <laughs> the service he'll be getting from either side. Right? But there's, See, yeah, you're right. There is a hole in that midfield, right? With Pozuelo gone. Yeah, so the c central midfield, like a number eight, you know, Bradley was a DP central midfielder. It worked out, mm -hmm. right? He's not what he used to be right now. But you bring in another box to box type of guy, kind so, of an so engine. So when Jude there. Bellingham arrives, <laughs> um, you know, is it yeah. this year or next Let's year? Let's go. Start the rumors. Let's go. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you're you're bang on, and they need someone in that midfield that can kind of help with transition, do a little bit of the dirty work, but still have that quality. And I think that's what'll take this team potentially to the next level. There was talk about Junior Hoyler, of course. He re-signed with Reading a one year deal. Were you surprised by that? Um, the longer it played out, I wasn't surprised because the way that this season transfer window is shaping up for Toronto FC right now he's not going to be guaranteed minutes if he comes to TFC and that's what was important to him ahead of the World Cup he wanted minutes Bernadeschi is going to play on the right wing Insigne is going to play on the left wing obviously you have Jesus Jimenez and Ayo Akinola mm -hmm. up top there was just no guarantee in that sort of attacking trio it's right? the deep attack uh, yeah wow yeah it's, it's exciting I'm still a little bit concerned though about Insigne not about the, play, the calf the injury quality, the calf injury he, he missed a lot of football down the stretch at Napoli, you know, we all followed him very closely. He was he was out a fair bit. That's a lot of money to commit to a guy that already has, I don't know whether it's a nagging injury or something more acute, but would you be concerned, Albert, if you're a fan? I think so. I mean, because you just, you don't know the status of the player, right? And But hopefully, uh, you know, he's going to be ready to go. But um, you spending that much money into a player, you would think that they did their job and they really went deep into this injury and how serious it is and how quickly he can overcome it. So uh, I'm, I, personally put my trust into the team that they did their due diligence in terms of, of how well the player is going to recover from his injury. But yeah, I mean, it is concerning. You put a lot of money into it and he's obviously going to be the key player for them if they really want to push on. You can bring in Bernadeschi and Crescito, but we all know it really comes down to Insigne's play. Yeah, you're bang on. And I'd, I'd, I'd echo Albert's sentiment is the timeline that was given to us. Usually with injuries, they never give a timeline, especially TFC this year. But they gave a, a, not a definite timeline, but a ch date that Bob Bradley came. He was prepared to come out and say, okay, July 23rd, Insigne is going to be ready. It's two weeks, mm. right? It's not like we're talking about, we'll see, we'll see what it looks like in two weeks. He said, potential debut mm -hmm. two weeks from now. So, Well, you know, the, the LA Derby is Friday night. Right, and you know, I haven't checked recently because I have no internet, so I can't <laughs> check. Um, but but the rumor was that that Bale may not play this evening. Um, let's let's find some odds when we get the internet back. Uh, who plays more games before Christmas? Is it Gareth Bale or Lorenzo Insigne? Oh wow, yeah. Two players, a lot to prove still. Yeah. To be honest here, yeah. Um, with, with a bit of a history of injuries in recent times as well, be quite interesting. I want to ask you. Um, just to appeal and appease the fan bases of Montreal and Vancouver, two teams playing better football than TFC all year long. Just how angry are they right now that TFC is once again getting <laughs> all the press, all the noise around this team? Or do you think they're pretty happy just kind of lurking in the weeds and just talking on the pitch? Yeah, I, I feel like they're part of this. They're enjoying the spectacle that's going on right now. I think it's a great thing for Canadian soccer. What's the saying? A rising tide raises all boats. Mm. And I think you've got to appreciate that for where... The needles moving in this country. Sure, I'm sure they wish it would be their team that are making some <laughs> of these the moves. Fans think that. Definitely the management. Yeah, you're right. But the fans are, they got to be less like, oh, here we go again. Yeah, Montreal's yeah. been through something similar in the past. They signed some big name players as well, right? So it's not, they, they've been here before. Vancouver, not so much. But yeah. Um, yeah, it should hopefully raise the level of those teams seeing that happening in Toronto. But obviously, competition is competition. So you're not going to be as happy as maybe we think that they should be. And the thing with Montreal, too, is they're, they've gone away from that philosophy. They've gone away from bringing in the star names because mm -hmm. it's backfired at them in the past. Instead, they're going after MLS players. Homegrown, right? And, and homegrown. It's yeah, it's working. It's the best way to build the league, right? The results speak for themselves, man.
Yeah, they, they, they do. Uh, before we end this chat, I've got to ask you, if you didn't know, I don't know how you don't know, but he's a big United fan. All right. The noise around Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo, who, by the way, did not travel with the team to Thailand today. More family issues. He's on his way out. Will, he, will his legacy be tarnished in your mind if he moves to another Premier League team? First of all, I take issue with you saying he's on his way out. You don't think he is? Mike, he's we'll gone. See. We'll see. He's gone. Hey, I, you said today, you showed me the picture. <laughs> yes. They dropped the jersey. Who's the first person they promote on the jersey? It's well, Cristiano they can still Ronaldo. They some shows with his yeah. name in the back right now, right? That's why. Hey, if maybe... there was ever a walking billboard, I mean, yeah. it's Ronaldo, right? Yeah. That is no true. Joke. They're trying to capitalize his marketing value, potentially. But to answer your question, James, yeah, I don't think he can go to another Premier League team. He's done so much with Manchester United. He's accomplished so much. He's an absolute club legend with United. You go to a team, especially a rival, let's say like Chelsea or, or Man City, then there's maybe a little bit of ill will. Look at look at maybe Michael Owen with Liverpool, right? Oh, I, I'm sure... Don't remind me, you still <laughs> oh, want to just have a cold shower thinking about right? it. You know, Liverpool just, uh, fans still feel a type of way. Yeah, yeah. Not Newcastle, right? The, uh, the United movie. Too, <laughs> yeah, no, you're yeah. right. You're right. It's, it's an issue. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But he's going to Chelsea, isn't he? Albert? He's, he's a winner. He's, he's going I think... I don't want to say he doesn't care about those things because I think clearly he does. I think moving to United over City over the summer, I don't know how close that City move actually was or if he was just using that as a kind of, a, you know, a strategy to move to Manchester United. But this guy's a winner. He wants to win. I think he'll go wherever it takes. He's going to go to a place that has a chance to win now and will pay him. And who can do that? Chelsea, Manchester City. Uh, he's not going to Liverpool, but Liverpool. I mean, you look at PSG, those types of teams, that's where he's going to go. So um, if he does move to another Premier League team, I still don't think it would tarnish his legacy at Manchester United because his his legacy is not just at Manchester United, it's the Premier League, it's what he did for the league. So I don't think that will ever go away. For a United fan, I would hate to see that if I was a United fan because it's like, this is our guy. Stay here, help us. But I just don't see that happening. This guy wants to win. He still wants to make money. And I think wherever that is, that's where he's going to go. I think the City move last year was prime pep. Let's put some heat on. Let's try and get Ronaldo. They'll, we know that he's going to United, and they'll be worse off with Ronaldo at United. And he played it beautifully. And no. they, they were, were they not? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't know if Ronaldo yeah. was the problem. Like, we can look at that team and break them down was. individually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, of course you think he was. I don't, I, I don't believe he was the problem at Manchester United. I think it's the quality around him. And obviously the manager coming in <laughs> second half of the year didn't. Yeah. Ralph Ragnett, who loves to press. We know, is Ronaldo going to press? That's not who he is. He's oh, I mean, a, he's the, a goal yeah, the now. decisions made at the top to bring in Ranić was a disaster. To I mean, even to to sack Solskjaer at the time, that didn't really make any sense. Um, keeping players that were unhappy, like Paul Pogba, not right. I love Paul. We both we talk about it all the time. We both love him, but yeah. you know, how are you going to keep players for so many seasons that aren't happy there and they aren't happy with the management and how the team is run? So it's Ronaldo was, I think, part of the problem. I don't think it was a whole problem. I think there's just something that's going on in Manchester United. That needs to be completely revamped, and I think they're starting that right now. What's amazing, though, is that you know, for, for a team that is you know essentially a team fighting to stay in the mid table, here we are talking about them and their moves from last summer. Yeah, United is still a brand. United is still huge, and uh, you talk about you know boats and tides rising. You know, I think for English football, you want a strong United, and I hate I hate to say that, but you do. And uh, I think Eric Ten Hag probably is the right man, but it might not be this season. It could be uh, a couple of years down the line. Um, as I mentioned before, we have no internet. So um, if Ronaldo is a Chelsea blue by the time you see this, I apologize. Blame the internet.